Okay, th this... There's nothing else up here. That's just... One division, which begs the question, where is the Army of Indiana? Or where's the rest of it? There they are! <laughs> oh my word. Brambro back with some Grand Tactician Civil War. CSA campaign in 1.06, and we're now into late April, and we have another battle here in Missouri, which has become a recurring theme because the Federals really want us out of Missouri, and they keep coming back and back. And Sterling Price's job is to deny them that goal. And they're putting more effort into it. They have now brought uh, about 42,000 men in three armies. Whereas Price has got uh, 18,000 men. Well, about 20,000 men. Uh, with his calf. So we've got a uh, little over 2 to 1 odds here. So this should be interesting. Worth noting, it is showing Price in command. Uh, but he is now the core commander under the overall command of Beauregard, who is the Army of Missouri commander now, and Price is the commander of the Missouri Corps. And the reason it's showing Price here as the overall commander, I think, is because uh, he is a lieutenant general and so is Beauregard. And I believe Price is seen as senior and that's because when I promoted Beauregard to this command, I forgot to actually promote him <laughs> to full general. Okay. Anyway, let's get in here and uh, see what we got for a map and all that sort of thing. I think we know what the map is going to be. It's just what is our situation going to be. It's a good map for a defensive situation. It's just whether or not we actually have a defensive situation. 44,000 under Morrell, and not quite 21,000 under Price. Okay, it is giving us a defensive situation, as it should. I mean, they came and attacked us, for crying out loud. His initial force coming in is 20,000 men, but he's got reinforcing armies. Where is our objective? It is okay. So it is a little bit different again. Similar situation, we're defending. They're coming down, yeah, they're coming down the wire road. They also have this road under Union control. Do they have any others? No. Okay. So it is entirely pot. Let's see if the order of battle. Uh, no. Let's look at the... Okay, so I think he's got two armies here, Indiana and Mississippi, and then the Southwest Missouri Army is arriving in two hours, so pretty much any time. Yeah, so he's got uh, 22, 32,000 on the field at the moment during deployment phase, another 16,000 coming. And this army of southwest Missouri could very well be coming in right here. So one thing we can do about that, though, is before that happens, I bet you Marmaduke can run over here and capture that road. <laughs> Prevent him from coming in uh, from that direction. I think that would be good. I'm going to do that, as a matter of fact. 
if I can find. Yeah, let's come out here where I can see everybody. Oh, and then Beauregard, the army commander, he spawned in down here. Where's the cat? Where's the cat? There we go. So I'm going to do that with him first before he runs off to scout elsewhere. Okay. Notice that <clears throat> before we came into the tactical view, when we first had the battle initiated, it did say that Beauregard's army HQ would be delayed by four hours. I've never seen that actually happen. The army HQ commander I've always seen is present at the start of the battle, regardless of what that uh, initial view tells us. Well, this seems pretty obvious that... Now, it would be possible that uh, Morel could have forces here. However, I think if there were actually any forces spawned here, we wouldn't have the deployment zone this close and round like this. So I am 99% sure there's no forces here. Which means it's got to be coming from over here, down the wire road, coming to the creek. And with... Um, With the objective here, this is the most obvious place to cross, but this is also a strong, strong possibility here as well. So I think we need to cover both of these, and I think we've got the terrain to do that. Yeah. So we're going to want to do pretty much what we've been doing in these similar types of battles is we want to force him to cross Wilson's Creek under fire. And these two fords are the initial places where he's going to want to do that. I'm kind of thinking of maybe putting parapets over here, creating a really strong position here to encourage him not to come here and funnel his forces over this way where we will put the bulk of our uh, troops. Or if I do it here, he may want to come flank this way and cross Wilson's Creek over here by the Sharp Place, in which case we're trading this water barrier for this one and we would set up along in here. All right, so that's kind of my general idea, and I'm going to deploy troops and uh, possibly even get time rolling and do a little scouting with Marmaduke, and I will be back. Okay, here's how I have deployed. You know, it's coming from this way, and he's got more than twice as many men, but it's going to come down to these river crossings and I've got parapets here and here which should deny these two crossings for sure and this crossing and, and maybe what I'd really like to happen is that he comes in here and is kind of funneled into uh, trying to cross here so it may have been a mistake to put this parapet here because now he may avoid that. Um, what could also happen is that and he doesn't have really good roads to do so, but he could decide to come over around this way, cross here, and try to flank us in this direction through this crappy, you know, a lot of woods, some creek, which will give him cover, but that's going to be very slow going for him, and we've We've got a spot here that I think we can defend in this direction pretty good. Or uh, he may come down this way and cross at the sharp place 
and try to come in on. The, I kind of feel like this is what is most likely to happen. So I've got a little bit of a refused flank to help out, and then uh, you know we got a little woods here for cover. Uh, we got a little bit of a creek for skirmisher cover that he would have to cross. Right? If he crosses at the road, then he's under fire from parapet. If he crosses over here, that's going to be more fatigue, cohesion, etc. And then, uh, you know, as and then basically, which you know, whether it kind of develops over here, or over here, I've kind of got the Napoleons in a spot where they've got a great field of fire now, mostly, and they've got room to move to another good spot as the battle develops. Pillow's division on the right. Rain's division on the left in parapets. These are both Mississippi uh, armed uh, divisions. Then we've got Pierce's division just kind of hanging out here in the middle. Um, if this becomes the primary focus, well then he's just right where he needs to be. But if they try flanking, I've got him in a spot where he can just march to either end over relatively open ground to where the uh, center of gravity of this battle develops. Marmaduke's over here. He's going to run over here and he's going to grab this spot before the reinforcing Army of Southwest Missouri can use it and, uh, you know, create a flanking situation for us. That will not prevent the Army of Southwest Missouri from entering the battle. It will prevent them from entering here, and it will delay them. There will be additional time before they're able to enter here or here. And this is Confederate-controlled, Confederate-controlled. He won't be able to enter there. That's Confederate-controlled. Okay. Yeah, so grabbing this entry point will force him to the same entry point that uh, Morell is using or could potentially make him come over here. Either one of which I think would be better than allowing him to come in on our flank. All right, so a little bit of scouting to do and the Federals have got a good bit of marching to do. I will be back. Just a real quick note, Marmaduke did capture this point. And interestingly, Army of Southwest Missouri is now projected to arrive in 14 hours, not uh, two hours as previously projected. So we had so that seems pretty clear he was going to come in at that point and has been delayed enough that he will not arrive today. He will arrive during the overnight deployment phase. Okay, Federals have been spotted. They are continuing straight down the wire road. They are not making this left-hand turn to come down this track, either to go way south or to come down here past the Manly Place. They're coming straight ahead past uh, toward the Ray and Wynn locations. And now that the Army of Southwest Missouri has been delayed by 14 hours. I am going to try to run Marmaduke back behind the Federal Army, capture this spot and this one. And I think that will fix it so that possibly the Army of Southwest Missouri may not be able to reinforce. Let's see if that works out. Have a few skirmishers up in here, mainly for vision. Since I had Marmaduke on entry point <laughs> denial duty, I think I can see. Yeah, there's some skirms over here too. It is April, so sunset will be eight. There's still almost five hours of daylight left. So I don't know if uh, 
Marmaduke is going to be able to grab this point and this one in time. Don't know. Oh, well, they're kind of making a right turn off the road and are going to start heading off through the woods here. That kind of smells like they want to do a flank attack over in this area. Anyway, that's what's going on. Lots more marching and scouting and entry point capturing to do. I'll be back. Okay, so there's been a little bit of development here. Um, first things first, Marmaduke will not be able to capture this entry point. <laughs> because one of the federal armies hasn't moved from it. And this is actually the larger of the two. This is the Army of Indiana. This is the 21,000 man army back here that look like they're in their initial spawning position. This is the Army of the Mississippi that is moving forward that has been spotted. Okay, this is about 9,500 men. It would be extremely tempting. It is extremely tempting. to move forward and engage this force first and the reason but, but the reason I'm not going to do that is because the very things that I'm hoping to use against the federals the low speed the fatigue the cohesion of river crossings well if I come out of the entrenchments and try to use those you know try to do that then I've got the same problem and we're going to get on the other side of the creek and uh, not be in the best of shape and then have more poor terrain to get through e i don't think that would develop very quickly so i'm i'm gonna leave it i'm gonna leave it as it is if this were more open ground through here though that would that would be pretty tempting these guys just spawned in and haven't moved Obviously, Marmaduke can't go get this spot now. What we can do, I guess we can. Yeah, let's just go over and run get this one, I guess. That doesn't look like the fastest way, but sure. Anyway, so here these guys are. That was worth mentioning. I'll be back. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Now Mar uh, Marmaduke has captured this. And now the Army of Indiana is moving. And they're moving kind of over this way. Meanwhile, the side of one skirmisher apparently stopped the Army of the Mississippi in its tracks. And they're kind of muddling about in here. It almost looks like they're they may be headed back north or I'm kind of looking sideways kind of may headed back east I don't know just got a few skirms out here for vision and cabs running around kind of seeing what they're doing all right who knows how long this is going to go on it is 1745. Sunset is at 1800. Uh, not visible at the moment because I've gone past them. Army of the Mississippi has come down here and they're starting to form up here near the creek. However, the Army of Indiana is all through here. And I've been snaking Marmaduke around in between them. Successfully, I might add. And he is now racing down this road to grab this entry point before dark. Is he going to make it? I think he is. His scouts are already there, but scouts uh, aren't strong enough. They can't capture. I don't think. I don't remember if I've tried. I don't think skirmishers can either. No, wait. Oh, that's just the position. Yeah, his scouts are here. Yeah, that was just his ordered position. Seventeen forty-eight. I think he's gonna make it. 
I don't know if the Army of Southwest Missouri is going to be able to enter the field tonight. Wah ha ha. Uh, meanwhile, Army of Indiana kept going this way, that way, this way, and I don't think it was their plan. I think they were just reacting to Marmaduke's presence. That's what it looked like. They kind of came this way for a while, then they came this way. I, I don't know. But Army of the Mississippi is forming up down here. And uh, I think all my skirmishers have come in. It's hard to spot them on the map. Do I have skirmishers over here still? I do. Okay. You, you've, yeah. Ross, bring your skirmishers back in. I don't think anyone else has skirmishers out. And while we let's let's get let me just go through and make sure everyone has long range orders. You know I'm gonna do a brigade by brigade, that'll be faster. The clicking isn't faster, but the order delay to get to the actual brigades will be faster, is what I meant by that. Okay. All right. He made it! Marmaduke! So, remains to be, we'll see over the overnight phase. Uh, right now, 1,800 and... Uh, this Army of Southwest Missouri is supposed to be arriving in five hours. Under the command of Miles. I think that's Dixon Miles. There's more than one federal Miles, but that's probably Dixon Miles. And that ostensibly would be 11 o'clock tonight. So we'll see if we get a Miles Arrived uh, message with no available entry points. Confederate, 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 Confederate. I've never actually done this before, so I'm pretty interested to see what happens. Meanwhile, Marmaduke may as well just start. He's only got six minutes left before may as well get your deployment zone. Well, where do I want him? I think his best bet is going to be probably just working down over. Mm, I don't know. What we'll is leave him back? Here. I think we're just going to leave him back here. <laughs> Yeah, you can, you can just just come over here. That's fine. Okay, so we're about to go into the deployment zone here. Just any any moment. Well, in five minutes, game time. Oh, they're already crossing the. Uh... Huh. I thought I had that under. This. I had already moved Pierce's division over this way and if I knew that the main attack was really going to come over here meaning both armies I would kind of set them up right in here but I'm not 100% sure that's going to happen The army of the Mississippi may attack over here, but the bigger army is the army of Indiana, and I don't think they've really... I don't want to commit all three brigades down into these woods down here. Let's see what things look like on the deployment phase. Which will be momentarily.
Okay. Um, so... Why is there no... Deployment zone. And I can't clear these... Well, I think I've run into a bug here of some type. Uh, clearly it went through the preparation for deployment zones, but um, I don't actually have any. And all of these supply status icons aren't here. I don't have any engineering points. And... Huh. Okay, so um, I think what I need to do is just save and, re and, and reload. I don't know how far back in time that's going to put me. I don't know what that's going to do to the entry points, but that seems to be the best option right now. I will be back. Okay, well... Um, Still no deployment phase, and we're here at 7 o'clock in the morning ready to press play. Uh, at the, so if nothing else, at least I got rid of all those supply barrel icons. I, I don't know if I accomplished anything else with that. If I had wanted to redeploy a bunch of troops, I'd be a little miffed at the moment. <laughs> but I didn't really, so okay, let's roll with it. And uh, so the Federals are still trying to get their stuff together. I need to get my calf back. Um, I don't think a huge fight is about to develop just yet. I will be back. Okay, so I don't know if this was uh, because of the uh, little bit of a deployment glitch and the reload. I, I'm not sure, but... This entry point flipped back blue. Did not get a message that uh, Miles had arrived on the field. However, we can see here that uh, they've got an estimate. I don't think it's quite that large, but it's pretty clear that Miles is on the field. He's shown as on the field in the HQ reports. This is showing they've got uh, 48,000 men. I think it's a little lower. Uh, and. Uh, there's an entry point here. So not only is he on the field, but I think he's on the, f how about over here? Yeah, that's still red. I think he's on the field here. So what I've got going is uh, Pierce's division are throwing up breastworks right in this area. I think this could get pretty hot in here. Still have the army of uh, Indiana out here somewhere. There's one of their units. I've got, uh, that's good. Yeah, we've got, uh, have coming back to start uh, figuring out what's what scouting wise so I'm leaving I'm leaving pillow where he's at for now and uh, anyway that's that's kind of where we're at okay well I think the battle is starting proper now so uh, or in some sense, <laughs> entrenchments being, or uh, breastworks being thrown up here, uh, forming through some skirmishers out here, caught sight, this is the Army of Southwest Missouri here, Army of the Mississippi's here, and they're coming across the river. We've got uh, some cavalry trying to cross this creek here, uh, skirmishers are engaged, and we have cavalry trying to cross right here. And so, uh, okay, I think uh, fight's on. Now this calf is taking plenty of fire from two brigades plus skirms. This division is pretty well screened for now. 
to build their breastworks in peace. Except Cabell's skirms aren't going to last much longer. Let's go ahead and pull them in. Let's get these skirms engaged. I really don't want these units crossing the creek yet. And they may not want to. They may see, just see that as cover and stay there. What's our situation here? Okay, so the morale of both armies is pretty high. 70 for them, 67 for us. It's a little bit lower for us because we're in Missouri. Um, but it's pretty close. And then we've got a few more uh, objective points, of course. We're holding the objective. And... Oh, he's still building. Okay. Let's get your skirms back out. Just keep you screened while you build your breastworks. Are these guys taking fire? They kind of are. Let's back them up just a little bit. Yeah, those houses are a little exposed there. Skirm's just kind of keeping an eye on what these cats are doing over here. They're just moving into position for now. I think there's going to be a pretty strong attack coming through these woods over here. Meanwhile, Army of Indiana, just Armored Duke keeping an eye on them. At least a division's worth of them are not moving. Let's see if he can uh, see a few more of them without getting engaged. Okay, this seems like, yeah, we need to get uh, Slack's artillery kind of oriented. More in this direction. I don't want to put him down in here, though. That could turn into a problem. Let's take this battalion and kind of move him over. About like that. Let's do that. Cab has been sent packing. Good. It's a little irritating up here. Maybe you can't seal off a battlefield. Maybe if everything is on your control, they just give them one. I don't know. But I kind of feel like it was the save and reload that did that. Rather than a mechanic. That's all right. Oh, oh, he's taking artillery fire. Let's go ahead and lay him. Let's lay these guys down. They're in forest cover. They're laying down. They'll be all right. They haven't taken any casualties yet. If that, uh, if that federal artillery wants to waste rounds firing at this target, I am more than happy to let them. Still taking fire, and now I don't know if he's got it. Shit. I think the only way that he doesn't take fire is if I just move him completely out. Is he able to counter battery? 
I mean, it's this guy that's doing it to him. Oh, we got some... Right now, it's just... Oh, well, 1st Brigade's bringing some... Making a movement up here. Behind their skirms. Okay, well, these houses are firing back. I think. Aren't they? Well, no, because he hasn't gotten the order yet. are coming in leading with their artillery I'm not against that kind of like get some more skirmishes up in the, oh, and then I didn't get for any building breastworks So when breastworks are in trees like this, I wonder if it's trees and breastworks cover stack, or if they just get trees or breastworks cover. Because if it's the second, I'm not sure it's worth going through the trouble. The breastworks are better cover than forest. I think it's 30% for breastworks, 20% for forest. But at this point, we've got Come on, he's gonna, yeah, he's, he's got a constructing, he'll get there. Right. let's go ahead and, I don't know if those skirms are actually gonna move or not, since they're kind of engaged already. Looks like they're moving. His attachment has gotten up into trench cover, but I don't think that's going to work out for him. The skirmishers are already wavering, and this brigade is picking up a little bit of forest cover, but not fortification cover. These guys haven't moved. So a bit earlier I had remarked it would be tempting to run out there and defeat this one army first before the other one shows up. Didn't do it because of terrain. Um, well, he's kind of doing it for me, isn't he? <laughs> a little bit. I mean, you know. 40 plus thousand men on the field, but here's 1st Brigade kind of carrying the load all by himself for the federal effort. y'all both focusing on one artillery unit. Let's get this guy taken care of. If we can. A lot of troops over here. Army of Southwest Missouri is uh, 16,000 men. Well, that looks like 16... It looks like a little more than 16,000, but... It's a pretty decent sized army. That army alone is almost the size of Beauregard's army. Okay. Let's 
going pretty well. Or as well as can be expected. These guys are just staying put here. At the creek. What's this brigade doing? Not great. It's taking fire from Hayes. It's taking fire from Parsons. Taking fire from Parson Sturms. Given all that, it's a little surprising that he hasn't taken more casualties than he has. And that's probably because he's getting a little bit of forest cover. Well, this army's here. This army's here. This army's here. It sure doesn't smell like anything is going to be coming in on pillow. So I'm not going to move these guys just yet, but I think we can now regard these guys as the reserve. And I think we can also move Sterling Price over this way. And sure. Come on over here too, Beauregard. Okay, these skirms are getting engaged by a brigade now. Daniel's skirm still firing on this artillery. Or they're engaged. It's not realistic to expect them to keep firing on the artillery. And just to hold down their casualties a little bit longer, I'm going to go ahead and lay them down. While they're engaged with that brigade, these terms are keeping these guys under fire. And actually, that cab has taken a fair amount of losses. How is our howitzer battalion doing? Not great. It's firing, but he's firing at this guy. Even with counter battery enabled. Which means he doesn't have a shot on that horse artillery. But it appears that that horse artillery still has a shot on him. Okay, well I don't want him to lose more guns in round, so I am just going to limber him up, and we're going to bring him back. Okay, these skirms are, uh, they've got this uh, first battery wavering over here. That's good. Armored dude, what do you got over here? Okay, it's just these units. And actually, I think Marmor Duke's taking some, no, he's not. These guys firing at him? Come on down this way. See what else you see. Okay, this brigade is wavering now. Good. Okay. Lane is now. Yeah, he's evacuating. He's taking some losses. But he's not going to break now. going to get pretty hot for Pierce.
Where's Martin actually firing? He's firing here. Well, if you can hit him, you can probably hit him. Let's go ahead and put you on counter battery. Let's bring these other brigades up. All of you on counter battery. Did I mess that up? I think I may have. Okay, these skirms came in. These skirms still banging away. As soon as you recover these skirms, let's put out another set. Here's another brigade crossing at the ford, coming under fire from Parsons. Oh, those guys are under fire. Actually, what am I doing? Here. I think with Mississippi rifles, you can probably, yeah, there you go. Run over there and shoot that artillery. Okay, let's see if I have this right now. No, I just managed to turn them all off. Okay. <laughs> well, they were moving anyway during most of that time. No great loss. I've just, just got skirms out here. Just keep an eye on what's going on. Marmaduke is not so... So basically it's just one division that's hanging out over here, it looks like. That's the detachment. Somebody's low on ammo. I think these are just skirms. Okay, Daniel. Bring your skirms in. Parsons. Bring us Parsons skirms. Bring your skirms in. What are we at here? 2,700 to 400. That is a good start. We got a long way to go with 40 something thousand men on the field. Actually, Parsons himself is low on Okay, this could get to be a problem. They started with low ammo, probably because the previous battle was so recent, maybe they haven't resupplied. Okay. Pillow's got to bring his dudes over. There's, there's nothing for it now. Um, let's detach this artillery. Just because I don't want to move him with the infantry. Okay. 40, 60. Okay, these guys are all full over here. They have 60. I guess these guys just blew through all their ammo on these few. This is the third unit they're engaging here. And... Yeah, Waveman's got 60. They started with full ammo. These guys have just blown through it. Okay. No, Waveman. Why aren't you shooting at these guys? 
Well, we've got the artillery tearing up that battalion. Well, I guess we're just going to go ahead and back these guys out just for ammo. Cabell is low. I think that's Cabell's skirms over here. over here. Uh, not there. More like here in the open ground. Thank you. Okay. Waitman has ammo, so how about you come on right over here? Artillery broke, good. And this battalion. Let's limber them up. exactly where they need to go, but where he is right now doesn't look very productive. Let's bring him here. getting some cover from the parapet, but he's not actually in the parapet. However, I don't think he's taking return fire, so I think he's fine right where he is. 600 casualties. Firing also. Okay. It's going fine at the Ford here. We've got this major attack coming in over here, and I guess uh, Pearson's division is about as well set up as they're going to be. Breastworks cover, breastworks cover. Does it actually tell you a percentage? No, there's no mouse over tooltip there. Okay. This will do what he can do here. Got Sturms out to soften them up as they come in. Hopefully we're firing at artillery here. Lots of detachment that has picked up guns. That's not a real artillery unit. Same thing here. Those aren't real artillery units. I mean, they have cannons. I think they've picked up uh, from routed artillery battalions. That guy. It does make a difference. Skirmishers that pick up cannon and start using them, but they're not nearly as accurate, nor should they be, right? They're not artillery men. What happened to Lane? There he is. Don't 
bring him, I'm going to bring these howitzers back over kind of in here. Where's the other one? Okay. Okay, th this, there's nothing else up here. That's just one division, which begs the question, where is the Army of Indiana? Or where's the rest of it? There... There they are! vacated that freaking position I oh man And they're at 7.6% losses. I mean, yeah, the battle's going in our favor right now for casualties, but uh, that could change real quick. Like, if we were at 15%, you know, right now, I'd feel like, well, we're probably going to get them to retreat before these guys really come into play. At 7 I don't know if that's going to happen now. Well, at any rate... Pillow. If I can find Pillow. Yeah. You need to turn around. And you need to face about... I think this is about as good as it's going to get. Right here. Man, I just completely gave up those parapets because I didn't see him coming. I was looking for them over here. I wasn't looking for them back over this way. And the other thing that Pillow needs to do is pull in. He's got skirmishers way out here. We need to tell them to make a come back as best they can. Hopefully those guys just stay put. They apparently are bugged out. And let's hope they stay that way. Um, it is time for Marmaduke to stop scouting and start shooting. So... Let's bring his scouts in and let's get him to come engage. These guys have taken a fair amount of casualties already. So let's have Marmaduke come on down and engage those fellas. There's this damn fence here that's. Fences always mess with a calf. Let's try to get Marmaduke to kind of clear this help clear all this crap out in here. Where'd he go? There he is. To the extent that these guys have any ammo at all, I think they need to come over here and be ready to help out Pierce. Slacks artillery. K 
Okay, we're putting we're putting pillow in here. Well, right now, you guys just need to turn around and face that calf. That's the first thing that needs to happen. Now, now, now. Not moving somewhere. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Waitman skirms. I don't know if you're actually going to move. Run over here. And I lost pillows. Uh, Where's pillows? Eight there he is. Is that him? Yeah. Bring all your skirms in from wherever they may be. They're out in the woods across the yeah, see they're coming from over here. And that was dumb. I should have sent this skirm to run over here just to shoot at that calf. I don't think I can undo the order now. Okay, well, it's getting interesting. Really, it's going to come down to can Pierce's division inflict enough casualties in all these yahoos? And can Pillow's division get back over here and hold the line against the Army of Indiana? Marmaduke's still coming over here. He's a little slow. He's coming through woods. Holy smokes. Oh, and pillows. Okay, that's not going to work. They're coming this way. They're going to. They're going to be engaging without cover. So, pillow. Halt. That was too that was too far a distance to order them. Okay. Texas Germans. Come well, okay, that's fine. Like that. Stevenson. Come here. And Clark. You know what? Just Just hang out here, right behind the guns. I thought I told all these guys to turn around. Maybe they don't have shots. Something's firing at this guy, I don't even know who. Wow, how are we doing here? I think this is going okay here. Parsons actually has shots from way back here, and that's fine. They haven't quite broken through our skirmisher line here. We've got some routed artillery. I'm pretty happy to see that. These guys actually aren't, uh, well, they are, sort of. Oh, they need to come in for ammo. Come on in. <laughs> Forney's brigade is engaged. Not much point to putting skirms back out for him.
<clears throat> Clark is having cohesion problems from these other brigades marching through him, I think. Pierce's line is going to be okay over here. I'm not terribly worried about that. Fence is just gonna mess with. What if I just tell you to? Well, tell you what, let's just tell them to come down this way then. That works. Rather than get him all hung up on the fence, we'll just control his movement around the fence. I mean, that artillery is not a threat to him. And we'll just bring him down this way behind him. Hope uh, Ross picks up some forest cover here because that's all he's going to have. Okay, let's let Stevenson regain some cohesion. That cavalry had a nice chance to run in here and mess with our artillery. He didn't do it. Let's move uh, Clark up this way behind. Ross and uh, Stevenson. Daniel Skirms have hung in there for a long time. And they're falling back. Let's bring them in. Corny doing okay. Lane is firing. Porter Alexander is finding targets right down here. Okay, that's good. Hayes is still banging away here. Now, he's out of ammo. That doesn't make them completely stop firing. Um, you know, basically, they're scavenging around trying to find ammo from guys who aren't firing anymore. He's only taken 26 lot. I don't know if this is really modeled. That there aren't that many wounded and killed to take ammo from. They do anyway. They do still keep firing. It just lowers their rate. I actually prefer that that artillery was not there because he's going to go through it and wind up uh, getting a melee, I think. How's this shaping up? Ross is engaged. He does have forest cover. That's good. <laughs> not have forest cover. No shot. No shot. No shot. I bet you have shots if you face this way. Or not. No. They want to face the nearest threat. They don't have a shot at the nearest threat. Who is this? Waitman. I hope that is the Sturms. Nope, it's him. 
these things out of splits. And now we've got cavalry making a charge up into the parapets. Okay, well, as long as this guy's wavering, let's get in here and break him. Except it's across a fence. He's going to try to come around. He's going to ball up in here and probably take all kinds of fire. Well, closely engaged here against the second brigade, who's taking 200 casualties. I mean, and there are no reserves, basically, other than kind of Clark over here. So I might kind of keep him. In, these, in this force if I can. see why they don't have any damn shot. This is terrible positioning for where they are. Um, do I have room? Let's move them back a little bit. That may help. And they can't see where they are. They're right at the bottom of the slope. If I move them back, they may have a better angle. I probably should have just given slack that order. Right. Armor dude. Take those guys out. I've given you your mounted fire perk. Use it. over here just fine. They're not really making a strong attack through here. And they're not taking enormous casualties. This is all kind of going okay over here, I think. Do you have shots? No. I think you'll find shots. Okay, they're done. Right. I don't know if... With those Springfield Musketoons, I don't know if he's going to be able to fire over the river at any of these units. Let's... Let's try to get him firing on these guys. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's working. He's going to take flank and fire from these guys, probably. I feel like these are probably closer to breaking. And plus these guys aren't having a great time with it. They're kind of small. Yeah, I don't know. Break it fast before you break yourself from your flanking fire. <laughs> How are we doing over here? Okay. Uh, Ross, rotate and fall back. This is turning into a terrible position over here.
is this position helping at all? Well, they're not quite in it yet. How are we doing on casualties? That's what this is going to come down to. 7,000, 15%. Uh, we've taken 1,400, so the trend is fine. As long as we can, as long as we don't get snowed under over here. Oh shit! Oh, they're routed. Okay. That infantry is wavering. Marmaduke's doing okay for losses. Doing all right. Okay, here's a routed unit. Here's a wavering unit. Okay, Pierce is pretty much... Okay, he's held just fine. However... And I don't think they're really going to press anymore over here, but there's enough units over here. I don't really feel like he can run over to help Pillow either. On the other hand, I think Pillow's kind of doing okay. I mean, we're at a point now. They're approaching 17% losses. And I believe that Pillow's division will be able to hold all these off long enough to reach uh, the retreat trigger. Okay. That guy disposed of. Can Marmot? I don't think he's going to be able to hit that guy. Might be able to hit these. thousand to fifteen hundred what are we doing for ammo here 26 rounds per man 40 rounds per man 39 rounds per man and we've mainly got artillery in front of us let's put let's put skirmishers back out I don't want to march full brigades into those let's put some skirms out to uh, bust up some of this artillery Gates were still close enough to fire. How's Pillow doing? I think Pillow's doing all right. I don't know if this artillery ever. They just, yeah. I mean, it's great position for facing this way. Is a terrible position for facing this way. <laughs> over here ok 
Cabell has skirms out somewhere, and I don't know where. <laughs> I don't have the foggiest idea. And not, I'm not aware of any way to... Uh, Oh, are they just right here with them? Yeah. Okay. They were just so close to them that the icon wasn't visible. I think we may as well bring in the skirmishers. Clark and uh, Ross have sent that cav. There we go. Whew, I'm not going to lie. That was a little worrisome there for a while. When I saw that big flank attack coming up here that I just completely missed. Having vacated the trenches here. <laughs> it took a long time in this battle for the AI to kind of get itself all sorted out over here and but they, they wound up doing a pretty nice job And the calf got a fair amount of action this time. I didn't forget him. We'll see how he made out there. I don't know if he actually did that many casualties. But he certainly helped break several units there. Right in front of the trenches. Uh oh. I may have just made a mistake. Feel a lot better if he had fast firing carbines, which are still a couple of months away. Six hundred and fifty. Maybe a bad idea. Charging somebody on a creek. And he's not actually in melee. They're firing at point blank range. Well, you're right there. Charge him again. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's a fine day's work, Marmaduke. Oh, nope, you're not done yet. There's some artillery here to... Still good on fatigue. Come on, Skirms. You're not, you're not done. Wreck this artillery. Hopefully there's some parrots or something that we can use. Ah, we crossed the threshold for major victory. 25% casualties, 11,000.
Right. They're done. Okay. Pop those guys. Or not. Maybe. Okay. Come on, Skarms. So Marmaduke kind of keeps moving and stopping. I'm going to give him a different order. Let's see if you can get there with, uh, you know what, just charge over there. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> All right, 11,000 to 1,600. And given how some of that went, I'm a little, I mean, yeah, it's lopsided. It could very well not have been. If he, if this army had pressed this attack a little harder through here, I think uh, Pierce's division would have had severe problems. They would have caused a lot of casualties, no doubt. But uh, it was just them, and once they ran out of ammo, there was no one to relieve them. There were, you know, to take their place on the line. So. This actually worked very well over here. Could have been worse. Could have been much worse. Over here, yeah, this all held perfectly fine in here. And with the parapets, of course, it would. But these brigades ran out of ammo pretty quick. And, and uh, that meant that their fire rate slacked off using Mississippi's, which is a low rate of fire weapon already. So yeah, um, they held just fine, and of, of course it was hard to uh, make a strong assault over these fords. It's just the way it's going to be. You know, I mean, the player wouldn't be able to do any better attacking across here. It's just the way that the brigades operate, right? But these attacks did deplete their ammo such that they really weren't much help anywhere else if needed and then y'all saw what happened over here I had a nice position here and I just thought they weren't coming you know it's almost like these guys up here were a decoy I'm not saying the AI is that smart but <laughs> you know I kind of got lulled into well Indiana Army somewhere don't see it man and here they come after I pulled my guys out so that was partially just me not paying attention. But it was also, you know, kind of a fixing, you know, not a successful assault here. But there's an attack here that ties up a division. There's a what could have been, a, you know, in numbers-wise, a pretty strong attack over here. And could have been a little bit stronger in execution. But that was a pretty serious attack on this side. And then they come all the way over from the other side like this. Now, granted, they had a lot more men, too. But uh, anyway, I thought that was a good battle. It was fun to fight. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And before we pop out here, let's just see. Now I'm interested to see how Marmaduke did. I bet he didn't actually do that many ca uh, casualties inflicted. Fagan's division. Oh ho! Over 1,100 casualties inflicted by Marmaduke. Uh, 300 of which were casual uh, cap uh, prisoners. Nice job. So and so Marmaduke himself is up to five stars of experience, and so is his brigade. Which means they probably hate him now. <laughs> oh, 
Also, how did our artillery do? Slacks division. Yeah, not great. Kind of out of position, moved to a better position that turned out to be an even worse position. <laughs> Based on the threat, caught behind a slope. Yeah, all right. Uh, this artillery, that's a howitzer outfit. They did pretty good. Over 100 casualties inflicted for an artillery, artillery battalion in this game is pretty good, generally. And where was our other battalion? Lane. He did 93. This is the one that got beat up pretty bad on that hill where he couldn't really return counter battery. Okay. Well, so Marmaduke had a field day there after uh, a couple of battles where he was kind of underutilized, <laughs> i.e. forgotten about. Okay, 7,000 rifles, perhaps, and 38 artillery. A uh, total of 1,900 captured. We don't have a POW camp, so, yeah, whatever. I've been thinking about making one, after all. I know I said I wasn't going to, but I'm kind of considering it. Okay, it wasn't any of this. Oh, our howitzers have arrived. We don't need any in existing battalions. No one's on six pound field guns, but we have a lot more smooth bores for new battalions. Should I desire to recruit any? That's the same, same, okay. Uh, we may have picked well, I was shifting uh, weapons around when the Mississippi showed up. So actually, I'm not sure what we have. But we're pretty well stocked now. We've got uh, almost two brigades worth of Springfields available. Uh, kind of same with Mississippi still. I've got 22,000 planes rifles in reserve and 24,000 reboard muskets in reserve. So we've got a nice batch of reserve weapons now. I don't think I need to unlock any more infantry weapons, nor do I need to order any more infantry weapons for the time being. But if some of these could be captures, I just don't remember what the numbers were. This looks a little higher. I think we may have just gotten some six pound field guns there. And this kind of all looks the same to me. Not sure what we captured there. At any rate, that will do for this episode here. Uh, another battle at Springfield. I know that's getting a little repetitive, but that's actually kind of the strategy in Missouri. Is uh, they come in here, they're making a big effort, they're dedicating troops to this area, and Price has got enough force to defend against that. And uh, kind of bleed them dry over here in Missouri. And he did another fine job of it today. Okay. Okay.
So as I said, that's it for this episode. Um, if you are new to the channel, if you're new to the series, and you haven't, uh, if, if you would like to catch up on what's been going on in this campaign up till now, I'm going to post a link to the series playlist here. At any rate, uh, thank you all for watching. I really, really do appreciate it.